you there. Hmm. Yes. Uh, I want you to take a look at the uh, reports from this month. Let me know how we are doing. Present it to the board next week, thanks. Hmm. Hello world, Prof Mike Green back with another video in our Kick-Ass Presentations video series. Today we're taking a look at presenting financial and other types of data. And you heard in the intro, your boss uh, at Amazon Prime Video wants you to take a look at this month's reports and make a presentation to management explaining how we look compared to our competitors. So here it is, the data. Ta-da! Um, first off, rule number one, you never, ever present the data, okay? You, you don't ever put this into your PowerPoint presentation, okay? Uh, this is useless. A, so first off, so we're, we're Amazon in this huge spreadsheet. You know, this is the report that everybody looks at. This is why you were hired, to look at this report and derive some meaning from it. So you don't want to present the data you want to present the findings, the trends, the analysis, the meaning that you uncover through critical thinking that lies within the data. So let's kind of zoom in a little bit here. This is the top 10 rows of that and only the first 10 or so columns out of, as you saw, over 50. So we'll start from here. This is our frame of reference. And this data table, uh, even this, you don't present. There's too much going on here. There is too much noise. You're trying to find a signal to swim through the noise to your boss or whoever your audience is. So you want to strip out all the different noise. In this instance, I've highlighted what I think the three columns are that are part of our signal. Everything else is noise. It's unnecessary. So if we strip that out, what does it look like? A, we get much larger fonts. It's actually legible. That's that helps. Uh, and B, it's it's much cleaner. But we're definitely not there yet. We take a look at this. It doesn't appear to have any organization. Maybe this table was organized by one of the columns we just removed. But now it just looks like random rows of data. What should we do about that? Uh, should we rank it by market cap or group it by industry? Uh, I've chosen to do a couple of things. A I've decided to sort it by company name. We work at Amazon, so we end up at the top. If you work at a company that doesn't start with the letter A, you could still use this method, uh, rank it alphabetically by company, but then move your company to the top afterwards. I've also decided, let me go back and forth here. So I've unbolded the industry group. That didn't seem like it was the important part. You can see here it's unbolded. I also removed the stock exchanges from the company name. In this exercise, we're not interested about one stock exchange versus another or which competitors are in each. So again, it's more noise. Uh, now this is a much cleaner table. We can use much larger fonts and it's much easier, at least for our, our boss, to scan within two seconds. But it still doesn't really tell us anything. So let's add some context. Context in this instance would be the difference between us and our competitors based on market cap. So we could do a simple formula, subtraction. How do we look? And we could see that um, we've got two competitors that are pretty close and everybody else we are blowing out of the water. Doing great. Now, since we're not looking at this over time, we can't tell if maybe uh, some of our competitors are, are catching up over time or we're just pulling away. We're just looking at a snapshot. So what we've decided is to look at one competitor today. And, I, and I've used a, a simple technique. I, I've added this kind of red box to help highlight it, and I've made it the biggest font on the screen. This tells your audience member what's important. And here's your signal. I've given you some extra data in this table, but what's important is that we talk about Comcast today. Maybe, you know, in our imaginary world, they're, uh, they're catching up to us. They used to be at negative 100,000, and now they're negative 47. We need to watch out. Um, show me some analysis, some knowledge and impact. Remember, that's what your boss is looking for. So here's the analysis. We've looked at it and this is what's important. Now data tables often, even if we get them down to six rows and four columns, it's still too much. Tables are there to show relationships and quite often 
we can also use graphs or charts as a better visual to show a relationship. So let's hit the magic chart button. Here we go. Boom. My presentation software, I hit the make me a chart button and it gives me this. Whew. Okay. This tells me nothing. How do we fix it? First off, always rank your charts highest to low or lowest to high. Doesn't really matter which one, it depends on the story you're trying to tell. In this instance, we know that Amazon is the largest, so I put them first and then everybody else trails down from there. But it's still we still don't know what we're looking at, so let's add some, some data points, some more information about this chart. I've added the numbers from the market cap, I've added some labels, I've added a title. Um, again, all default options, it's still now it's kind of too much. How can I clean this up a little bit? I'll, I'll bounce back and forth here. So what I decided was uh, we'll make the market caps, we'll take the decimal places out. We don't need that when we're talking about $130,000. Does 20 cents matter? Not in this instance. Um, so you can see the difference here. I've also moved the labels down underneath the columns. I've put the market caps in the the cars columns themselves and uh, that's about you know it just results in just a little bit cleaner chart but it still isn't telling me anything so how about this let's let's show the real impact the difference between us and comcast negative 47,000 again this is a snapshot it's not a, a timeline or a, a trend line over time so we can't say that you know why we want to look at Comcast we're just showing that this is our number one competitor right now and now again this chart in a matter of seconds tells your viewer something it says oh this is what's important and the biggest font on the page is what I want to highlight one thing to note about charts and graphs you want to make sure you're using the right one there are several different charts that actually create a chart with this data but they mean nothing are these companies part of a whole no why would we use a pie chart similarly are they part of a, a, a whole and we want to use a stacked uh, bar chart like this no a are my labels become useless there at the end I could fix that with formatting but that's not the point we're trying to get across that doesn't that doesn't mean anything and then if we try to use something like a, a line chart we have no time you know this would be useful if we were looking at this over time and we had 10 snapshots to move from uh, left to right across the screen but since we only have one snapshot uh, this is not very useful another uh, key point is, is you really do want to stay away from 3d charts they look flashy you know especially if you use some of the newer versions of keynote and powerpoint you know they can kind of come in with this cool animation but they're very difficult to read if I didn't have my labels here, it'd be tough to say where these uh, different columns are on this chart. So it's best to stick with a 2D chart. You can see even in some of these charts that I use, there's some nice shading and some gradients to give it some depth. You can use some visual design tricks, but I recommend you stay away from the 3D charts. Another way to make the maximum impact uh, with your data is to create some statistics for it and turn those statistics into something graphical. I like to do something like this. Boom. We've got a 26% lead over our nearest competitor. Wow. Or, you know, you really want to do something. We'll pick the smallest competitor and say, we are 30 times bigger than blah. Um, this doesn't always work with the management because they kind of have an understanding for the organization they're in and they won't get fooled by well yeah that's true but this is our smallest competitor so it depends on your audience if you're giving a public presentation and you're the CEO of the company yeah sure these make yourself look as great as possible you're not lying this is actually what the data says it's just uh, we've chosen to pick and choose the best looking stats possible then the final tip for this is to have your data ready I said at the beginning, never ever present your data. But that doesn't mean your boss isn't going to say, well, where did you find this? Sh show me. 
have printouts ready and have them formatted and highlight to show your findings. Don't show your boss that 100 column, 100 row spreadsheet that I showed you on slide one. Show them the important information, the raw data, but make it in a way that they can easily find it and back yourself up. Now that was an impressive presentation. What other kind of tricks do you have for presenting financial and other kinds of data? Comment below. Thanks for watching.